Hey, you. Yeah, you. You know who I'm talking to. Or do you? Today we are going to talk about something that authors and speakers use all the time. An address. So an address is a verb. It means when you direct your spoken or written words to someone. And usually we do this by mentioning a name so that we know who exactly we're directing our spoken or written words to, who exactly we are talking to. For example, in this sentence, your mummification paragraph uses many specific details. Who's you? Who are we talking to? Whose mummification paragraph uses many specific details? We need to be more specific. We need to direct this sentence to a specific person. And we're going to do that using their name. So for example, let's use the name Sam. So I am talking to Sam. I am addressing him. I'm going to say you because it's a direct communication between Sam and I. But I'm going to say Sam's name so Sam knows that it's Sam that I'm talking to. And I can put this address really in a variety of places because it's not a part of my actual sentence. So your mummification paragraph uses many specific details is a complete idea on its own. Sam is an extra element. It's just letting Sam know that that is who I am talking to. So I can put this at the front of my sentence. And then, of course, I would need to separate it from the rest of my sentence with a comma. And that is because this is not a part of my complete sentence, my independent clause. Your mummification paragraph uses many specific details. So I'm going to set it apart. I'm going to separate it with a comma. Sam. Your mummification paragraph uses many specific details. However, that's not the only place that I could put my direct address. I could also move it to the end of my sentence. And my comma is now going to separate my independent clause. Your mummification paragraph uses many specific details from my direct address, Sam. And my end punctuation is going to go here at the end of my sentence. The beginning of the sentence is an option. The end of the sentence is an option. Let's look at where else I could put my direct address. So I can also interrupt my independent clause. Your mummification paragraph uses many specific details. I could interrupt that and I could let Sam know that I'm talking to Sam in the middle. So I could actually interrupt my sentence here. Your mummification paragraph, comma. So if I put my direct address in the middle of my sentence, I'm going to have to separate it on both sides with commas. And I'm going to end up with a sentence that looks like this. Your mummification paragraph, Sam, uses many specific details. This would work for any name. So any person I was addressing, for example, I could also change this to, let's say I am talking to the panther. He's really rocking his culture challenge. So your mummification paragraph, comma, panther, comma, uses many specific details. And again, I would capitalize because it is the panther's name. But sometimes I'm addressing somebody and I don't actually use a name I'm going to use another noun that specifies who I'm talking to. So, for example, I could also say, your mummification paragraph, blue team, uses many details. So, again, this is still a direct address. I'm directing my sentence to the blue team. I'm letting them know that is who I'm talking to. Even though it's not a name and it's not capitalized, it's still a noun. It's still a specific group of people. So it is going to interrupt my sentence and I'm going to use commas on either side. Not only that, but this direct address, just like any direct address, could go anywhere. So I could move my direct address to the end of the sentence. I could also move my direct address to the beginning of my sentence. I'm 
I changed my capitalization there. So remember, when you have a direct address, you are going to separate it from the rest of your sentence with commas.